Good morning. I want to thank you for joining us on this Tuesday for our daily devotional here at Assembly Chapel Law Life Applicating Word. Uh, let's get right into it. On yesterday, we were in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 40, and we were talking about, uh, you know, having strength and, and waiting and being patient. I think the verse was 29. Has, uh, 29 um, he gives power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. So I want to read 30 and 31 today. <clears throat> 31 being a very, very, very uh, familiar passage to many of us, especially at Assembly Chapel, because I say it all of the time. And, and every time I say it, I mean it is helpful. It, it, you know, it gives uh, it gives you encouragement. It gives you strength or well, for me anyway. And so I want to read 30 and 31 today. <clears throat> Since even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings of eagles as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and shall walk and not faint. And so you have to remember, we have to remember here at this portion, uh, uh, this junction of, of history, rather, in this particular passage, that when Isaiah is prophesying this word uh, to the people of Judah, uh, that they still they'll still have about a hundred years uh, worth of trouble, a hundred years worth of, of, of pain, a hundred years worth of um, probably what they would consider you know bad luck or unfortunate events and things of that nature. And then after that 100 years, remember, they still have uh, 70 years of being in exile. And so before uh, God's promises, start coming to pass. So it's, it's, it's natural to know that some of them, some of them that's receiving uh, the prophecy from Isaiah won't even be living when the promises of God uh, come to pass. And, and, you know, we can look at that in the New Testament because we, 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 we believe in the promise of the second coming of Jesus Christ but the the and, and we are you know charged duty bound to live uh, by the statutes of God, the laws of God, what God tells us to do, to be obedient. <clears throat> and the thing is, many of us won't even be around. You know, we'll already be. Uh, God will already already call us home by the time Christ comes. But it's still important that uh, even though many of us won't even see the event that it's still important that we still stay faithful to God's word. And so uh, you can imagine, you know, that, that may not be the best illustration, but you can imagine uh, what the, the, um, these, these children of Israel was dealing with. Uh, you know, we keep hearing about the promise, hearing about the promise. Uh, yes, we see signs, the wars and the rumors of wars. We see all of the signs. But, you know, when is the promise coming to pass? And some of us, not even speaking of eternal life, some of us, you know, know for a fact that God has promised us things here in this life, um, not not just things that you want to come to pass, but I'm talking about things that God has promised you through relationship, through conversation, through prayer with Him. And I think the issue is, for some, the issue is. Um, it's not a promise from God, but it's something that you just really want to happen. I'm not saying that God is not going to bless you with the desires of your heart, because the Bible teaches us that um, you know He'll He'll bless us with the desires of our hearts uh, if we diligently seek Him. And so you know that's the that's the prerequisite for getting the desires of your heart is when you diligently seek Him to get off and get back on. When you diligently seek Him, you're not going to be seeking things that's outside of His heart and outside of His will. So back to this. Uh, you know, if when you know that you have prayed over it, you know have you know that God has said it's going to come to pass. He's going to do it. He's going to fix it. He's going to heal it, deliver it, whatever the case may be. Uh, he's going to bless your business because you know you're doing things the right way. He's going to bless you on your job because you're doing things the right way. And that's another point that I need to make. Don't think God is going to to bless you the way you want Him to bless you when you're not doing things His way. You have to be obedient to God to get the fullness of his blessings. If, if you're not being obedient and you feel blessed, I challenge you to to start being more obedient and then then watch, 
you know, what, what God is going to do. And so the children here of Israel, they have to stay persistent in, in, in their belief. They have to stay persistent in their faith because it's, it's going to be a long time. This is why God is telling Isaiah to talk a little more tenderly to them. Now, yesterday, remember I was saying how, how, the, whole, how the whole paradigm shifted uh, from, from the persecution and things of that nature to the promises of God and what he's going to do for the children of Israel. <clears throat> I don't know if Isaiah knew uh, the extent of time that it was going to take uh, for them to have to wait. But what I do know is that God did not tell him to, to let them know, because, you know, if somebody told you it'll be about 170 years and God's going to fulfill this promise, how many people's faith would waver? How many people would just get upset and turn away? And things of that nature. So, 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 so God's wisdom. You know, we know He's all knowledgeable. We know that He's 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 omnisapient, uh, omniscient, but He's also omnisapient, where He has all of the wisdom. God has all of the knowledge, but He applies to His His all wisdom being to the knowledge, and and that's what makes Him so great, uh, because His wisdom matches the knowledge. Knowledge is just knowing. Knowledge, I know. Uh, what the Bible is. Wisdom is when I apply what the Bible says. So there's your difference. And so God puts it all together perfectly because he's the perfect being. And, and, and he, he, he knows how to ration out information to us. He knows how to deal with us uh, during what we're going through. And so this is the reason. This is the reason. We say this all of the time because, like I said, it's encouraging to us. It's uplifting to us. Uh, it gives us more fortitude to keep going. It, it helps us in our non-belief, as we was talking the other day. And so this is the real reason why Isaiah is saying this in uh, verse number in chapter number 40, uh, verse number 31. This is why Isaiah is saying this, because he knew people. He know people are getting tired. You know, he, he know um, that that even though he knows what God is going to do, he knows people are getting tired. People get fed up. They're, they're just like we are now. And so let's bring it up to 20 and 23. Uh, you know what's right to do. You know what the outcome is going to be when you do what's right. Don't be weary in well-doing. You're going to reap a harvest of blessings if you faint not. But the issue with us is when is the harvest coming? When is harvest time? I've been planting. I've been planting. I've been planting. I've been doing what I'm supposed to do. I've been doing the right thing uh, to the best of my knowledge, according to God. When is the harvest time coming? This is where that, that time between planting and, and, and reaping the harvest and not being weary. This is where the scripture really kicks in. This is where it really kicks in because he's saying that, that, that even during this long wait, uh, during this 100 years of of hard times and difficulties and through the 70 years of exile, even the young strong men are going to get tired. It doesn't matter, you know, what, what place you're in. Uh, let's look at this spiritually. It doesn't matter, you know, where you are spiritually. Sometimes we get tired. It doesn't matter how strong your prayer life is. I can just speak for myself. There are times where you get tired. There are times where you get exhausted. During prayer life, sometimes there are times where I just feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over. It just feels like sometimes I just don't know what to say. And that's why I'm so glad that, that um, you know, the, the, the Holy Spirit is, is praying for me when I get to these places of, of blockage in my prayer life. It's making uh, uh, utterances and groanings that I, won't under that I can't understand. It's, it's making intercession for me and th and that's what I love about God Jesus and the Holy Spirit they help they aid and th and they 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 assist you when you come up weak uh, uh, the bible says over in the new testament when you're when you're strong that's when Jesus uh, when you're weak that's when Jesus is strong he'll be strong for you and so we thank God uh, for his word and for his scriptures of encouragement but it says here it says, and I'm closing, it says, but they, but they that wait on the Lord. It says, even though the youth will faint and get weary and the young man shall utterly fail. Like I said, that word, but that, conduct, that conjunction, that, 
that 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 lets us know that there's going to be a shift. Amen. We're talking about being tired. We're talking about being weak. We're talking about being weary. There's that word, but that gives encouragement. Even though you're getting tired, even though you're getting weary, even though you feel like you're going to utterly fall, but if you wait on the Lord, he's going to renew your strength. So whenever you start getting tired of doing what's right, wait on the Lord. Waiting means staying in place until what we mean here is staying in place until God comes through. God's strength will give you the power um, to 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 overcome anything that you're going through. And let me let me let me I'm going to read this and then we'll close. We all need regular times to listen to God. Waiting upon the Lord is expecting his promised strength to help us to rise above distractions and difficulties. That's what we're doing when we're waiting on the Lord. When you're doing right, when you're getting tired, you're getting weary, you feel like you're going to fail. Wait on the Lord. His his promised strength will give you the power to endure distractions and and, and endure the things uh, that are making you weary and weighing you down. It helps you get over life's distractions and difficulties. Heavenly Father, we come thanking you uh, for giving us strength in times of weakness. Thank you for loving us, Heavenly Father, when it seems like no one else cares. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for for deliverance and bringing us out heavenly father continue to be our strength when we get weak lord god lift up our bow down heads heavenly father and when we are at our very weakest state heavenly father thank you for encouraging us to know that if we just continue to wait on you that you're going to renew our strength we thank you now in jesus name amen win the day be strong and if you can't be strong remember god is strong for you